Hello, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, this is a daily live broadcast that uh, gives us an opportunity every day to just uh, talk about Jesus in the Bible and and uh, praise Jesus, worship him, have fellowship with other believers. It's a Bible study and fellowship program. So uh, as I said, it's daily, 1 p.m. Pacific time USA. And I have Brother Ray who lives in Australia. I think it's about 6 a.m. there. So uh, the broadcast is available worldwide, I guess. Uh, we're going to study, um, we'll pick up, uh, on Sundays I've been uh, studying the book of Job. We've completed 16 chapters, and we're going to pick up with chapter 17 today. Uh, but I want to ask uh, Brother Ray to introduce himself, and, uh, and then we'll get, get started. Did you want to say something, Brother Ray, and other, before I get started? Well, I can't hear you now. Maybe you have your, your mic, maybe you're having a technical problem again, but uh, I'm going to go to uh, Job. I'm going to read it in the KJV first, and then I'll probably look at the Amplified. Uh, Job chapter 17, verse 1. Uh, it says, my breath is corrupt. Let me look at the Amplified first because I want to I want to see what the uh, how they title it. Um, I want to make sure that. Uh, You were pleased with it. All right. Um. Job says, This is Job speaking. My breath is corrupt. My days are extinct. The graves are ready for me. Are there not mockers with me? And doth not mine eye continue in their provocation? Lay down now, put me in a surety with thee. Who is he that will strike hands with me? For thou hast hid their heart from understanding. Therefore shalt thou not exalt them. He has speaketh flattery to his friends. Even the eyes of his children shall fail. He hath made me also a byword of the people. And aforetime I was as a tabret. Mine eye also is dim by reason of sorrow. And all my members are as a shadow. Upright men shall be astonished at this, and the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite. The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. But as for you all, do ye return and come now, for I, am, I cannot find one wise man among you. My days are past. My purposes are broken off, even the thoughts of my heart. They change the night into day. The light is short because of darkness. If I wait, 
The grave is my house. I have made my bed in the darkness. I have said to corruption, thou art my father to the worm. Thou art my mother and my sister. And where is now my hope? As for my hope, who shall see it? They shall go down to the bars of the pit when, we, when our rest together is in the dust. Okay, um, you are gone for a while. I guess you're able to log back on here. And uh, uh, so I read that in the KJV. I'm going to go through it verse by verse in the Amplified. But uh, here we have Job continuing this um, kind of as a conversation between him and his friends. But it's not the kind of conversation that you normally see where you say one sentence and I say a sentence and we go back and forth like that, that kind of a uh, back and forth dialogue. It's, it's each party is making a long speech and then the, the other party gives his speech as an answer. Um, but uh, what, is, uh, what, is, what is your response to that, brother? Job um, was the only one who, uh, all his friends did not believe in God. Um, he was the only one. He, God, God said, test this man. And that's why. He, he wanted to show them. God wanted him to show uh, his friends, his wife, everyone, that what, what, what belief is all about. His faith was so strong, even though uh, Satan had taken all this stuff off him. He was still, his faith in God never faltered one little bit. But um, his, his friends, they half-heartedly went through the ceremonies. They, you know, they didn't really truly believe in God like, like, like Job did. This is what I think. Anyway. What do you think? Well, um, I do think that uh, they probably all believed in God, but not in the same way that Job does. Uh, you're correct. It's uh, Job's faith, and that's one of the whole points of this book is to demonstrate this faith that God that Job has, uh, and set an example for all of us in the future. That uh, in spite of all these horrible things he's enduring, that he never stopped loving and, and believing in God, uh, even though his friends stirred up trouble in his mind by accusing him. Uh, brother, uh, when I'm done talking, I'm going to mute, but you got to mute your microphone when I'm talking because I get every time I, do you know how to mute? I do, yeah, every time I do, I lose it. Lose it. Uh, if you if you point to the t go to the very top part where there's a picture of a person and then there's a picture of a microphone, if you left click on the microphone, it should oh, yeah, there you're muted now, okay, and yet you're still there, okay. Um, as soon as I'm finished talking here, I'll mute and then you can respond. But if we if, if we have the microphones on, it, the sound is really um, affected. Um, but so I, I do think you're right that their faith is totally different than Job's. And their understanding of God and, and the love of God and salvation is totally different than Job's. Uh, as I've gone through the previous chapters, uh, one of the things that probably many people have been surprised about is to find all of the... Uh, the, the teachings that we can garner from Job about um, our salvation is by grace through faith in God. Uh, at, at Job's time, they didn't know this Savior God would be named Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, but they knew that they, uh, Job at least understood that his sins, he, he, he coined a phrase, God has put all my sins in a bag and sewn it up. So that's an example of how we see our salvation, that God has cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Uh, he's not imputing, imputing sin to us any longer. Uh, so Job understood it, and in the Old Testament, all those prophets, um, the, 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 the message of salvation was the same, except the identity of Jesus was not known. Uh, there's a... A group of people that, that think that at Job's time and Moses' time and uh, you know Noah's time and uh, all, all these great prophets of the past that somehow these people got met, got saved 
through some kind of uh, other program, other uh, uh, method. And, and yet, uh, everybody always got saved by the grace of God through their faith in God to save them. And we see that in Job also. But we also see here that his so-called friends are accusing him and trying to make him believe and repent and, and, and admit that his problems are the result of his sin and sin in his life. That's They're saying, this is why these things are happening to you. You need to acknowledge it and repent. And uh, even Job is not aware of really what happened. Job doesn't know about the meeting that Satan had with God and the arrangement that they made. And he doesn't know that it's not God doing it to him. He, uh, it's Satan. And he, he doesn't know that it's not based upon his uh, sin. Even God said he's righteous. So there's a lot of um, things that Job and his friends are not privy to because they, they weren't able to read the first couple of chapters the way that, that we have. Uh, brother, I'll give you a chance to respond to that. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Oh, good. Yeah, Job, um, all his friends prayed to God for only one reason, to get something out of God. Uh, Job never valued property, money. Uh, his belief in God was, uh, property and money was to glorify God. But their beliefs were to, um, they were chosen by God, so they, they had um, they had this contract with God. The reason that God destroyed the temple in the first place, because um, they used to spit in God's face and say, "You owe me, you owe us this." Yeah, but Job he worshipped God wholeheartedly from his heart, and um, this this is what I find like um, Job uh, worshipped God, and he didn't care about material things. He lost all this stuff, but he didn't care about it. Um, he did care about it, but it wasn't important as his belief in God. Um, Satan had come across um, one man after another, and every one of them was corrupt. Every one of them uh, only sought God for what they could get out of God. Um, uh, I mean, Satan didn't even believe uh, Jesus was um, righteous because he wanted to test him in the desert. Because he believed he was in a man's body, so he must be corruptible. Every human being he's ever come across has been corruptible. So when he tested Jesus, he really tested him. Starved him for 40 days, without water, without food, right? And then weakened him to the point of um, saying, uh, I'll, I'll give you food and water and glory and all that sort of stuff if you bow down to me. And then Jesus said no. And he used scripture to uh, show that... Uh, that uh, God, like Job, the way Job thought about God, God is more important than all the material things we have. And uh, he kept on going on about this, that, that the earth is just a black rock that we are standing on, that everything we get from the earth is not, not important, as important as what God is to us. And uh, Job was uh, putting this point across to his friends. And uh, even though he uh, didn't know what, why this was happening to him, his values in, uh, with God, concerning God and the worship of God, and God knew this, right, it was more important than any material thing that he had. Anyway, that's it. All right, thank you. Um, uh, that was interesting insights there. I, I think that uh, I don't. I didn't hear you say anything that I would question, and, and I am curious about one thing. Um, that when I did the first chapter before I even started um, uh, going into the text of Job, what I tried to do was lay a foundation of, about um, uh, the time frame of Job, uh, when when Job lived, when the book of Job was written, and uh, how to place that in the in the timeline of history. And I, I laid out several options for that, poss several possibilities. But I'm wondering if you have any any um, position on that or theory. No, I've never gotten into it. I've never really worried about it. Ever. Um, but I'll actually look, I'll look into it further. There's something else to look into. 
All right, well, if you go back and watch the video one in this series, uh, you'll see, I, I won't rehash it now, but you'll see the, uh, the, the various uh, viewpoints and, and people have uh, placed it at different time frames, and I found that interesting. Uh, okay, I'm going to go now and read this verse by verse in the Amplified, and it, it's easier for me to understand it. You get a little different perspective. So starting with chapter 17, verse 1, uh, in the, let me look at it, in the Amplified. Okay. Uh, they gave it a title for the chapter. It says, Job says he has become a byword. Uh, quote, my spirit is broken. My days are extinguished. The grave is ready for me. Uh, so it, it seems to me, oh, by the way, let me, let me say this just for a moment on a side note here that um, I've talked about this a few times over the last couple of weeks. And I, if anybody's wondering, I'll update you. Uh, yesterday, my mother-in-law, my, my wife's mother, uh, has uh, departed. And she is with the Lord now. It was a, it was a long, uh, long ordeal that she went through and her family along with her. Um, and now she's, she's gone. So those people who've been praying for my wife's mother and for my wife and her family, uh, thank you for the prayers. And uh, she was very much aware that, uh, as Job says here, uh, that uh, how he phrases it, the grave is ready for me. Uh, it, it's not like some people, they, they suddenly have a heart attack and die in a moment and then uh, and other people you go to sleep and they they die in their sleep and and then that's uh that's one kind of a death and 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 then another way is you're sick and you're dying and it takes days weeks or months and that kind of so in her case she knew that the grave was waiting for her and and now she, she's gone but here we have job He's at the state where he's saying his spirit is broken. He's totally, totally crushed. He hasn't lost his faith. He hasn't lost his love for God. He won't denounce God and curse God as his wife urged him to do. Uh, but he is, he is crushed by this whole experience. He's had all of his property taken away, his family's uh, uh, killed, and his, uh, and his health is ruined. And, and, and his so-called friends are just ridiculing him and, and, and blaming him for the problem. And his, his spirit is completely broken. And he says, I'm ready for the grave. Brother, your reaction to that? Yeah, his friends were in the rules. Um, the rules said that uh, the price of sin is death. And uh, if he was sinning, uh, that's the only reason he got sick. That's the only reason he lost everything because he was sinning against God, and God was cursing him. They couldn't see anything else that would cause this. And uh, But his faith never wavered one little bit. I mean, this man, you read Job, you just go, wow. You know, his faith is just there all the time, because he understands God. He understands that what God wants from mankind, you know, that... Man, he doesn't want us to be corrupt. He wants us to be um, loyal to him, to, to know that the earth is just a stepping stone until our, our eternal freedom with the Lord. And uh, this, is, this is why. But all his friends, all they ever saw in, uh, in God is uh, God owed them because they were the chosen people of God. Uh, they were circumcised. They had a contract with God, which was broken when Jesus died on the cross. Um, and that, that's it. They wanted this contract. I can only imagine what God must have felt with this, uh, uh, with them constantly saying to them, you know, like, we have this contract with you, we have this covenant with you uh, through Moses and through Abraham. Um, but Job never done that. Job, well, all the time was blessing God and thanking God for all the things he got. You know? And so God gave him more, sent the angels down to give him more and more and more because he never said, you owe me or you. He understood God, and this is why. And uh, when Satan um, could not believe, every man that Satan had come across has been an unrighteous man. And even Jesus said, there's no Jews in heaven, which I 
find yeah, interesting. Um, but over and over again, Job showed that his faith never faltered one little bit. His love of God was always there because God is his final destination. God, is, he knew that he would be going into the arms of the Lord, and that's what he was waiting for. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. But um, I could not understand when, when Jesus said that not one Jew ended up in heaven uh, where you have Job. And did Job go to heaven? Or, I don't know. But um, so well, let's, let's let, me, let, me, let me say that uh, I, I did a, by the broadcast I did yesterday, uh, you weren't able to make your computer work right so you couldn't participate. But I did discuss yesterday the idea that um, uh, who are the Jews and uh, the Judaism and legalism and how did Judaism start and who were they? Uh, um, Judaism, Moses, uh, I mean, uh, Abraham was not a Jew. Samarian. Uh, uh, Job was not a Jew. And jo I placed Job before Moses uh, somewhere. Uh, some people think he this took place before Noah, but the majority viewpoint is that it has happened sometime after Noah and yet uh, before Moses. Uh, but this is all before Judaism came into play. Even with Abraham and Isaac and, and uh, ja uh, Jacob, there was no Judaism. Uh, even the term Jew uh, didn't even come about until one of the 12 sons of Jacob Israel uh, uh, one of the twelve, his twelve sons, was named Judah, and his particular descendants they referred to as Jews. And then gradually, the term became applied to the a, a larger uh, uh, group of his descendants. But it's important to understand that yeah, that uh, these prophets of the Old Testament they weren't Jews. Uh, I'm not going to go into the, the the verse that you, you brought up now about no Jew go to heaven. But uh, um, it's important to understand that all these people before Judaism was established, they were not Jews. Uh, I'm going to go on to the next verse now here, and uh, um, it says, um, verse 2, Surely there are mockers and mockery with me, and my eye gazes on their obstinacy and provocation. Uh, so if you've watched the last few uh, uh, videos on this, uh, we've gone through these long um, speeches his friends have made against him. And that's what he's referencing here. His, his so-called friends are just accusing him and saying he's to blame. I've experienced this in a way. I, for several years when I was preaching, I had to preach in a wheelchair because of health problems. And uh, uh, I, I, oftentimes people who knew me and people who would meet me in the street would want to pray for me and some of these people were trying to convince me that the reason I was in the wheelchair was because of either I had some sin in my life that I had to get out and overcome and repent of uh, or uh, that uh, my faith was not strong enough I needed more faith otherwise I would be healed and uh, I, I don't I don't agree with that at all I, I think people have health problems uh, uh, even uh, it's not a result of their sin necessarily. I mean, so obviously if someone is drinking alcohol and they get liver disease or they're smoking and they get lung disease, uh, they've caused that problem. But many times people have health problems and it's not because of some sin, except for the fact that we're all sinners and we're mortal and our bodies are corruptible and, and we're susceptible to disease and death. Uh, but uh, many times I've experienced the same kind of thing where people are kind of, they, instead of showing you sympathy, uh, and, and they, they, they want to say, well, this you're in a wheelchair, but it must be something you've done. And that's what his so-called friends are You're All these problems, it's got to be a result of you. You've done something, and you need to admit it. And uh, uh, not only were they wrong, because we know in the beginning of the book of Job, but we, we see that it's not God that's doing it, it's Satan. And it's not because of Job's sin, because it, and yet because Job was considered righteous. So it's it's a it's a uh, that brings me to the question I, I want to ask you if you can try to answer this briefly because I don't want to get sidetracked too much. But how would you, uh, in a, briefly as you can, ex explain the reason 
that God allowed this to happen to Job and that we have this book of Job and, and, and the reason uh, uh, it's, uh, it's important to us. God allowed this to happen because he knew that Job's faith was so strong. He could go through this. He could endure this. Um, Satan could not falter him at all. Even his friends who um, who were, you know, like picking on him and saying, you have sinned. Um, but actually, Job went through this for them um, to show his faith in God and how and what God was. But how do we put it? Job's faith was so strong that Jesus, and I mean that God knew, uh, knew that he would come through this all right. Because he, he his faith was... With God, his faith was um, God was more powerful than the loss that he had. He could lose the whole earth, and Job would still love God. He, he, he could, but unlike his friends, who would only have to lose, um, say, the house might be repossessed or something, and oh, there's no God. You know? um, the Jews in the Holocaust, the Jews in the Holocaust, where they um, uh, were killed in, in concentration camps. Rabbis were coming out and praying and saying, there's no God. They weren't like Job. They'd lost their faith completely. You know? um, because they said, anyone does this, you know, like, yeah, there, there mustn't be a God. They're, they're killing all our people. You know? But um, they didn't know that uh, 2,000 years before, uh, the, their covenant with God had ended uh, when Jesus came along. If they prayed to Jesus, they probably would have got somewhere. But uh, still the same now. But... Uh, no, Job's faith was something. Every time I read Job, I it lifts me up about twenty feet. I mean, his faith is ah oh, unbelievable. Let's not do that. Oh. Yeah. So I, I I think you're expressing in your own words what I've said about this book is that it serves as an inspiration to us, an example to us. Uh, and and uh, these things happened in God's foreknowledge. He knew that. Uh, uh, allowing all this to happen to Job, the book would be written, the brother Ray and I would be discussing it today, people would be watching the video and learning about the book of Job's experience, and we would all learn and be inspired by his faith and his example, because it gives us perspective. Um, no matter how many problems we have in our life, we can always look at Job and say, well, look what Job endured, and uh, it gives us a, a perspective. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next verse. <clears throat> it says, uh, verse 3, Give me a pledge, a, a guarantee, a, a promise with yourself. Acknowledge my innocence before my death. <clears throat> Who is there that will be my guarantor and give me security, give security for me? But you, Lord, have closed their hearts to understanding. Therefore, you will exalt them by giving a verdict against me. Uh he who denounces and informs against his friends for a share of the spoil, the eyes of his children will also languish and fail. But he has made me a byword and mockery among the people, and I have become one in whose face people spit. Uh, see, so on one hand, we have uh, Job, uh, he, he, he's, he, he still loves God. He still has faith in God for his salvation. And, and yet uh, he, he is confused because he doesn't understand really what's going on. Uh, in the beginning chapter, he's telling his friends that, wait a second, it's not because of my sin. I haven't done anything to deserve this. And, that, uh, and, uh, and, and then eventually... He gets persuaded by his friends that, well, maybe I have just done something, and that's and, and God is doing this to me because I've done something. And uh, but but now he's at a point where he's totally uh, crushed by it, and and he's actually as we come into future chapters, there's going to be a dialogue between him and and, and God himself. <clears throat> but he's as he said in this first verse here, he says that I am broken. My spirit is broken. So on one hand, we know that Job still loves God. 
he still has faith in God, and, and, and yet his spirit is broken. So it doesn't mean, so we, we need to understand that you know, we can be broken down and just crushed from, from, uh, from life and the things that happen to us, uh, and yet uh, we still have faith in God. We still believe in God. We still love God. Uh, okay, I'll let you respond to that before I go on. Yeah, all his friends were trying to punish him. Um, they they were trying to punish him because they thought he, yeah. You know, um, even his wife said, "Lay down in the ashes and die, you know, curse God and die." And uh, he um, he laid in the ashes and he he didn't ask God once, "Why are you doing this?" Never once did he ask him. He accepted that if this what what God wanted for him, if this what what God wanted to do. Right, he said, "Do it." This is my faith is so strong in you. Do what you want. Kill, kill me. Yeah, do what you want. He was waiting for death in the ashes. He was trying. Uh, he was just saying that I'll be with God, and that's all he cared about. But his friends didn't think that way. To them, God was someone who you go out and pray to God, and He gives you something. He's like a father. He you know, you beg the father and he, and he goes and gives, gives something to you, you know. The Job had a completely different uh, thing with God. God. He loved God like he wouldn't believe, with all his heart and with all his soul. soul. And even though his spirit was broken and he got all this stuff happening to him, he still did not lose his faith with God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is a distinction between his his uh, his faith and his love of God and his spirit being broken and being dejected. Uh, so, um, they, the fact that his spirit is broken is not an indication that his faith is broken. It's just his spirit is broken. He's crushed. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, imagine put, putting yourself through everything that he's gone through. If you if if you don't know what he went through, then, then read Job, read it yourself, or go back to the videos on the earlier chapters that I've done, and you will see what he's gone through, and and, and uh, who would not have their spirit broken from that? Uh, let me read on now again, uh, chapter verse uh, seven. My eye has grown dim, unexpressive, because of grief. And all my body's members are wasted away like a shadow. The upright will be astonished and appalled at this. And the innocent will stir himself again up against the godless and polluted. Uh, so here he, in his words, he's, he's saying what I just said. He, he said, I'm, I am so under so much grief because of look at my body. Like my, my physically, I'm just, I'm, I'm almost completely destroyed physically, and and then that's not even referencing the fact that his family is killed and his wealth is destroyed. So, uh, uh, and then verse nine he says, "Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to his ways, and he who has clean hands will grow stronger and stronger." So here he is saying just what you said, brother. He said that my spirit's broken. I'm, 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 I'm in this ho horrible state of grief and my body is withering away and being, being destroyed. And yet he says, nevertheless, the righteous, thinking of himself, will hold his ways. I will still hold to my ways, my faith. And he who has clean hands will grow stronger and stronger. And so... He does have clean hands in terms of he hasn't done something that has caused God to inflict afflict him in this way. All right, uh, brother, what's your response to that? It's true. He, um, his faith was so strong. He was full of boils. He was he was waiting in the ashes to die. He, he thought, well, God's doing all this to me. He must want to kill me. Let him kill me. So he just waited in the ashes. He um, he was starving. He was he was full of boils. The dog used to come up and lick his wounds. He, uh, um, because his faith in God was stronger than, yeah. And his wife couldn't believe what he was doing. He wife to his wife, his, his wife was like, "Go out and get some more money for him." It's meant, yeah? but um, her her faith was as long as God give her something, uh, she was happy. 
that she had faith in God. Uh, she was a full-on friend of God. If um, God stopped giving her things, then there is no God. Uh, this is how they think. This is how they, Job didn't think this way. Whatever God threw at Job, Job knew that he would always love God the same way Jesus did and uh, the same way we should too. Yeah, that is, uh, that is truly great faith. When, uh, um, it's easy to love Jesus and praise Jesus and preach about Jesus when, when your life is wonderful. Uh, I, getting back to the subject of death, uh, uh, the idea that sometimes a person can die just very suddenly and other times people die and it's a slow, grueling, horrible process that takes days, weeks, and months. And I've seen family of mine die slowly and horribly. And, and I thought many times, I even made a video uh, titled, what, what kind of death do you desire? Would, would I prefer to have a death just where I, I just go to sleep tonight and I die and it's, uh, there's no suffering and it's quick? And be with the Lord, and uh, or or if I died slowly, and it was a very very difficult type of death, then you have a, a test of your testimony, because here I am praising Jesus and telling everybody how uh, how mighty He is. He is God Almighty, manifest in the flesh. How merciful He is, even though we are just. Uh, wretches and sinners uh, the scripture says he commended his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners Christ died for us so he loved us so much even though we're sinners he's willing to die for us so he's merciful his love is so great and we uh, we praise him and we worship him and yet am I gonna say that kind of a thing praise Jesus if I'm suffering and slowly dying over days and weeks and months that's the test, and this is the this is the test that Job is going through here. Will he curse God and, and die, as his wife said? No. Uh, I, I hope I hope I don't have to go through that kind of a death and, and have my test my faith tested. But I also know that that I believe that if I did do that, that my if I'm praising Jesus and preaching the gospel as I'm suffering for days and weeks and months, that that testimony is more powerful and more meaningful to people because anybody could say, oh yeah, he, he, praised, he praised Jesus and believed in Jesus until he started suffering, until he got sick, and then he lost his faith. Now, I don't want to give anybody the impression though that uh, if you lose your faith, you lose your salvation. Um, I don't believe that at all. I think that people do have a crisis of faith. It's just that I personally, I don't want to have a crisis of faith. I want to be like Job and have my faith remain even as I suffer. But if you do have a crisis of faith, if your family was killed, if you had horrible health problems, if you lost everything, uh, some people do curse God and they lose their faith and they get angry with God. But the scripture tells us if we have no faith, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So the wonderful thing about Jesus is he is that faithful friend that uh, remains closer than a brother. Uh, that, uh, he's, not gonna, he's not going to desert us even if we turn our back on him. Uh, but brother, I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Um, if you could choose, would, would you die peacefully in your sleep? Or would you choose a horrible, grueling type of death and be able to uh, finally witness to all your friends and family uh, in, that, in the end times of your life? Um, I've been through this. Um, I have prostate cancer. I'm in remission now. Um, I ended up in hospital, and, um, you know, I had, my bladder was, uh, my prostate was so small and was halfway inside my bladder. I couldn't be, I had to have a catheter uh, just to go to the toilet. But I had cancer all the way through me. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I but I never lost my faith one bit. Um, I was in agony, agonizing pain. The pain meds were actually making me ill. Um, I was on such high doses, and the doses were increasing um, to the point uh, it was just ridiculous the amount of pain meds. And then what happened? I went down to the beach when the when the last doctors when I they burned up all my money. I had no more money left to pay them. To um, already, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on tests and. You know, to um, to tr try and see what they can do and treatments. I went down to the beach and I sat on the beach and I prayed to God, you know, to help me. When I come back, my wife, who's a, a registered nurse, um, she said that one of her patients had told them about a naturopath. And she said, the naturopaths um, never, never talked to her. And she said, she can help me. And uh, I rang her up, I talked to the naturopath, she arranged for an interview. It cost me $46. I went and seen the naturopath and she told me all about cancer. And she said, I cannot cure your cancer. You can. And uh, she said the immune system, she was telling me these things. I didn't believe a word of it. What she was telling me, I did not believe a word she said, but I, I had no choice. So I went with what she was telling me. <clears throat> it saved my life. And I, I end up, um, I did, yeah. That was in 2007. Um, I was only having about an hour of sleep a night, and hour on, hour off, hour on, hour off. Um, I went one not one morning. I woke up with what she was telling me to do, and it was just doing things that that was so easy that were ridiculous. And uh, one morning I woke up, I slept for eight hours, and I thought, "Thank you, Lord, God." had found somebody through my prayer to help me. And um, and this person had helped me. And all she did was pay, I paid $46, she had an interview, she talked to me for a little while, and then she gave me the advice I needed to go and come back my cancer. And the first question she asked me, what's your diet like? And I said, what do you mean diet? He said, what should, my diet was pretty poor, by the way, it was bloody, it was awful. <laughs> But she said that, um, what is your diet like? And I said, oh, diet's pretty good. And I said, this and this and this. How many vegetables do you have? And all this sort of stuff. And she told me that green vegetables. I won't go into it. But, but um, just using these things, two weeks. And I, two weeks later, here I am starting to feel better. I went to the toilet one morning. Usually I have to have this catheter, which I put up, put up there. Woo <laughs> but um, one morning, I found I didn't need it. I just went to the toilet. I don't know if you, I, I did an Irish jig. <laughs> but the Lord was keeping me alive. I was going to live. Uh, my wife and I had already gone down and bought the casket. Uh, we sent the funeral home. I had my wife and daughter uh, outside cuddling me, putting their arms around me. The moment, the moment I bought that casket, they were, they were, they were crying. They, they were like, you know, we, were, we were crying right in front of the funeral line. But um, my faith never stopped, never faltered one little bit. I always believed that God had a purpose in everything I'm doing. And I don't know if you can imagine the pain I was in, but it was absolutely agonizing agony. It, it never, ever let up. It was continually there all the time. If it wasn't for pain then, man. My worst problem then was trying to get off the pain meds and trying to get off the antidepressants because I because I actually um, you get pretty depressed when you die. But um, yeah, I uh, oh by the way, my sympathies for your loss. Well, I'm not going to tell you. But um, yeah, we are all meant to die. We're going to live on this earth and then we're going to die. And then we're going to have eternity. And, you know, and um, I know God's real. Um, I know Jesus is real. Unfortunately, for some people, I've had the experience of an NDE where I, I was, by the way, when I had this, I was ex-army. Um, I didn't believe in God, but God believed in me. And um, I was drinking, I was uh, uh, drinking and drinking and drinking. And uh, the drinking had actually uh, caused me ill health. I had a bowel, a massive bowel infection. 
Uh, when I got in the hospital, I lost about 40 kilos. And uh, I was so weak, they decided to do an appendix operation just so they could run my bowel and, uh, um, and see, see what happened. To see if I had any uh, tumours or, or whatever. They didn't find any, and my appendix was fine, but all they had was a massive bowel infection. But um, on the operating table, um, I died. And uh, I just floated above my body. And all of a sudden, I got pulled into another room. Um, I was just waiting. I knew that I was that they were going to fix me up, then I was going to go back. It was like they were making the bed, and then I was going to go back back into my body. And I had, I've talked to other people about NDUs. Uh, I've had the same. They just wait around for the, we seem to wait around for this to happen. And then um, the next second, I got pulled, pulled like into another room. It was a beautiful blue room. There was two people um, there. Um, he was down the bottom. He was kneeling down. He would not let, let me see his face. I don't know why, but he would not let me see his face. And then, um, but he was talking to me. And uh, he told me that we all have a purpose and you have a purpose. And he said that your purpose on this earth is um, you, you're going to do good things. My other problem was that when I went back into my body again, um, I woke in darkness, the whole place, compared to where I was before. It was in the recovery room. And you know how bright a recovery room is? I woke in darkness. There was darkness all around me. And the darkness is still there. I can still see it. This place is darkness. It, it, that's what it is. The earth is just darkness. And then compared to that. And um, I know that my other problem was old habits. Trying to get to God and trying to get away because you, you pull, your body is, my mind is pulling me to the, the old habits I had. I had to do so many things over change. I had to get rid of all my friends, by the way. It was all like the ex army, and they're all atheists, and they're all, yeah. You know, I told them about what they did, they looked on me like I needed a um, straitjacket. But um, I had to get out of all these bad habits, and I didn't know how bad I was until I started to give all these things up. And they still kept on pulling me, you know, the partying, the things I used to do. But the swearing, oh, I couldn't believe it. But gradually, um, I was able to sort of cleanse my soul, if you want to put it, and uh, but it took a long time to do that. But even now, that pull is still there to go into those awful things that I used to do. And um, but I don't want to do them. I, I, I'd rather I'm trying to cleanse my soul so I can be with, with the Lord. And uh, but my two brothers, they're atheists. Uh, they are rich. They're a bit multi millionaires. Um, I've been in business, so I've, uh, but I'm not rich anymore. I'm poor. Ill health has really um, taken all my money. It's, um, I'm on an invalid pension. But, yeah. but I don't care because God wants me to do this. God, want, God has chosen me or, or, or wanted me to do this. So I, I don't try and attend God. But, you know, I go into churches. And I find some people in churches, all they believe in is the church. They don't really believe in God. Um, they believe in the rules of the church. Um, but as far as, the, as God, I, I don't know. I, I, I talk to them. And then the feeling I have is you're, that I have others in the church who have got so much faith. It's amazing. The more much good go. But um, people go on to the church for social reasons. I mean, I don't know. They're Christians while they go to church, and they're um, not Christians when they go away from church, um, when, when they're at home. But um, I find that really funny, but I've seen that a little bit. But um, my faith in God is, is always there. Job's, um, I think Job, I think God did this for Job's family, um, the church. I mean, I'll stop talking, otherwise I went one more back. <laughs> All right. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I think your uh, your trial, your testing, uh, what you've endured uh, is also for something for everyone to consider. Uh, not only Job and Brother Ray, and I had a year 2014 was the hardest year of my life, and we all are going to have periods where 
uh, we go through these trials and tribulations and testing. And uh, Job is a uh, an inspiration to us to how how we can deal with it. I'm going to go on here with verse. Uh, what, where was I? Job says, "Nevertheless, the righteous will hold to his ways, and he will he who has clean hands will grow stronger and stronger." That he that's verse nine. He's referencing himself that uh, how he uh, how he will deal with all this. Verse ten. Now, as for all of you. Come back again, even though I do not find a wise man among you. He's referencing these, these three friends of his that are trying to advise him, but they're advising him incorrectly and just really condemning him. Uh, he says, my days are past, but my, my purposes and plans are frustrated and torn apart. The wishes of my heart are broken. These thoughts try to make the night of, into the day. The light is near. They say in the presence of darkness, but they pervert the truth. But if I look to Sheol, that the netherworld, the place of the dead, as my home, if I make my bed in the darkness, if I call out to the pit, the grave, you are my father, and to the worm that feed on decay, you are my mother and my sister, because I will soon be closest to you. Where now is my hope? And who regards or considers or is even concerned about my hope? Will my hope go down with me to Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead? Shall we go down together in the dust? So uh, this is uh, this is this is Job at a, at a very very low point. He starts off by saying his spirit is broken. And that's what he's talking about is his, his so-called friends of uh, after everything else he's gone through, all the suffering, all the loss. And then these friends come instead of consoling him and uh, being helpful, they are discouraging and, uh, and uh, uh, blaming him. And, and he's, he's saying that I'm near death and that's, that's, that's what's waiting for me, the grave. Um, the next chapter, we'll, I'm anticipating that we'll probably get the answer because it seems to go one chapter is Job and another chapter is his, his friend giving an answer and they go back and forth. But this is a place where we'll stop to, today, except I'll, I want to take a moment to uh, uh, give the message of salvation. Um, everything that we learn in the Bible is beneficial. Um, in some way. Uh, but there's one thing in the Bible that is of utmost importance, that is essential, that is critical that you understand and, and believe. And that's what I want to, I do not want to neglect that. How could we neglect so great a salvation, the scripture says? I will not neglect it. Every video I make, I want to make sure that you hear this good news. So if you're watching now and you've never heard the good news about Jesus, the good news about the free gift he has offer, he's offering you now, then uh, I, I'm happy to be the one to tell you that uh, the world throughout history, all over the world today, uh, all the different peoples of the world, all the different religions of the world, uh, and, and when I say all the religions, I'm excluding biblical Christianity. The, the Christianity we find in the Bible is the exception. All the religions of the world, all the belief systems, really, there's not a dime's worth of difference. They are all telling you that you can go to heaven if you earn it, if you deserve it, if you're good enough. They're all teaching the merit system. But the Bible tells us in Romans 10, 3, it says, you're trying to get to heaven through your own righteousness, through your own personal merit. He says, but that's not God's way. That's the way of the world. That's man's way. But the scripture says that's not God's way. God's way is putting our faith in Jesus instead of putting our faith in ourselves. So that's the main thing I want you to understand is that if you're trying to get to heaven through personal merit, because you are a good person, 
because you join their religion, because you practice their religion well enough that you think that God will accept you and be pleased with you, that's wrong. You need to reject that. You need to repent. By repent, I don't mean repent in terms of stop your sinning and change your life. I'm talking about repenting. Change your mind about how to get to heaven. Change your mind about Jesus Christ, who he is and why you need him. No longer put your faith in your own ability to work your way to heaven. Reject it and now believe in Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him. Uh, who is he? You must understand who he is. Jesus is eternal God Almighty. He became a man so that he could die on a cross for our sins, and he did it. He was faithful. He was faithful. He went to the cross willingly. And on that cross, he suffered and died, and he paid for all of our sins. Believe it. Believe he paid for your sins. Now sin is not the barrier because Jesus paid for your sins. You have access to God because of what Jesus did for you. And then he was buried for three days, proving he's truly dead. But on the third day, he raised himself from the dead, proving he has power over life and death. And his resurrection is what gives us confidence that putting our faith in him really means something. The Jews asked Jesus, well, if you're say who you say you are, give us a sign. He'd already performed like a, a hundred miracles, healing people, feeding people, uh, raising people from the dead. He'd done all that. And they said, well, give us a sign, prove us who you are. He said, the only sign I'll give you is the sign of Jonah. As Jonah was in the belly and the whale of the whale for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for the three days and three nights. He was speaking of his death, burial, and resurrection. And so that resurrection is the sign that gives me confidence and should give you confidence that our faith in Jesus Christ is justified. Put your faith in him. The Bible says the wages of sin is death because we all sin. We will all die. And then we have the second death in the lake of fire. That's what every person has to look forward to. But the scripture says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you want eternal life, you get it through Jesus Christ. No other way. No other person, just him. So please put your faith in Jesus now and uh, no longer put your faith in yourself or in all any other religions of the world. Instead, put your faith in this person, this person, Jesus Christ, God and Savior. All right, put your faith in him now. Uh, uh, Brother Ray, uh, I'll let you make a final remark and then we'll end the live broadcast. Yeah, Jesus is the way. Um, I had a, um, a while ago in the church, um, one of the men had brought a little dog in the church. Right? And uh, he was patting the dog because he, he was going to somewhere else and he, he had his little dog. He was actually buying it for his girlfriend. The dog had sort of seen the pastor's wife and bit the pastor's wife's leg. Right? Her comment was, um, she didn't forgive this person. Right? Her statement was, how dare you bring that thing into my, into my church? This is the pastor's wife. They, they built this church, by the way. How dare you bring that thing into my church? And I said to her later, I said, you had an opportunity to forgive him. Because he said, sorry. I said, why didn't you? She said, I was caught up in emotion. Because my, my leg was sore and I was hurting. She hit him. My marks were coming out of the leg. So I said, where's your faith? Why, why, why didn't you forgive him? Why didn't you say, even though you were bleeding, and you now as Jesus did, you, you should have forgiven him. And he, she said to me, she started crying. She said, I don't know why I did that. I was just emotional. You know? But um, it's amazing. She had no faith. She believed in the church, the rules of the church, the power of the church. But she didn't believe in the power of Jesus. And um, Job shows, even though he's lost everything, he shows us that he didn't care about all the things he had. He, didn't care, he cared about all the things he had, but he cared more about God. God was on the top of the list 
rather than all the junk he had. And all his friends, all they cared about is what God can give them. They prayed to God for what, for what they could get out of God. And this is why you know, Jesus destroyed the temple, as you know, in 70 AD. But um, all they believed in is, you know, like um, the power, power of power of religion. Um, I hate religion, but I like relationships with Jesus Christ. Um, but anyway, that's all I'm going to say. All right. Thank you, brother. That's right. We're, we're not asking you now to join a religion or become a religious person or follow some set of religious rules. We're asking you to trust a person. And this person happens to be God Almighty and our Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. Um, um, th Brother Ray, thank you for joining me. I'm going to close the live broadcast now. And, and if, uh, I, I have these live broadcasts daily, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time. And that would be 6 a.m. in Australia. Uh, and so um, join me uh, in, as a, either a viewer or a participant. And uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.